This video will introduce you to the concepts of kinetics and equilibrium. Topics covered include chemical reaction rates and rate laws, factors that affect reaction rates under kinetics. For equilibrium, we will discuss equilibrium expressions, how to calculate an equilibrium constant, as well as discuss the shifts that occur in equilibrium. We'll start with kinetics. Kinetics is defined as the study of the rate or speed of a chemical reaction. Some other important key terms, activation energy, which is symbolized as an EA, which is the minimum amount of energy required to initiate a reaction. On the graph below, which we will be filling out shortly, this is from the reactants to the activated complex only. The activated complex, which I abbreviated AC up there, is an intermediate or an unstable state that exists before the reactant turns into a product. It requires energy. So let's look at this diagram, and we'll cover these diagrams in more detail on the next slide. But this is an example of an energy diagram, and you'll see here that the activated complex is at the top of the hill. The reactants are here, the products are here. You'll notice that the activation energy is labeled as the reactants location all the way to the activated complex. Expect to be able to do this on an upcoming test. Let's revisit endo and exothermic. We discussed these in the thermochemistry unit. These are energy diagrams for both of those. An endothermic reaction has energy down here where the reactants are lower than the products, so energy or heat needs to be added for the reaction to proceed. This right here is your activated complex. Here are your reactants, here are your products, and then the activation energy would be from here down to where your reactants are. An exothermic reaction is the opposite, where the reactants are higher in energy than the products. It still has an activated complex, but the activation energy is going to be much less than endothermic, still from the reactants to the activated complex. Usually, exothermic reactions proceed faster than endothermic reactions, and there's excess energy or heat, so these reactions release that extra energy. Let's discuss the different factors that affect reaction rate. We're going to describe what happens, as well as provide a brief explanation for why this happens. As you can see, the graphic organizer is now complete. So the first factor, size, shape, or orientation, what takes place? Larger molecules are slower than smaller ones. Okay. The reason for this is because bulky atoms may block the reactive part of a molecule and prevent it from reacting as fast as it possibly could. If the molecule is smaller, it can move a little easier, maneuver a little bit easier, and therefore the reaction rate tends to increase. Concentration of reactants is the second factor. Rate is going to increase as the concentration of reactants goes up. This should make sense. There's more molecules available, so they can go through more collisions, if there's a lot of them, per unit time. And if they're colliding more, they're more likely to react, so rate will increase. Temperature is the third factor that affects reaction rate. Rate increases as temperature increases, because kinetic energy increases as temperature increases. More movement, 
again means more collisions, which means a higher rate. And finally, catalysts affect the rate of reaction. Rate is going to increase when these are present. Catalysts actually lower the activation energy for any given reaction and causes those reactants to take an alternate path to get to the products. These will be important for your upcoming test. That was a very, very brief introduction into kinetics. If you are a science major, you will spend a lot more time on kinetics in Chem 151. Equilibrium basics. Dynamic equilibrium is defined as the rate of the forward process in a reversible reaction balancing out the rate of the reverse process. The word is equilibrium, so you see the word equal in that term. Chemical equilibrium is when the forward reaction, excuse me, when the forward rate of reaction equals the reverse rate of reaction. Okay, so it's important that you know that general definition. Let's talk about how to write out equilibrium constant expressions, as well as how to calculate them. Okay. An equilibrium expression is represented with a K, and often it's written with a K and a little EQ. That EQ stands for equilibrium. Overall, the general formula is this. So K EQ is always products over reactants. Okay, so products over reactants. They also only include the aqueous and the gas states. So no solids or liquids. And again, you'll cover that in more detail in Chem 151 if you need that course. Okay, we're going to write out the general equation for KEQ assuming that these are all gases or aqueous. Okay, so all of these are gas or aqueous. It's products over reactants. So here we go. The KEQ would be our products, which are the capital C, and the coefficient actually turns into an exponent. So capital C to lowercase c and it's multiplied by whatever substance d is raised to its coefficient, little d, divided by our reactants, uppercase a, raised to its coefficient, little a, times substance b, raised to its coefficient, little b. And this is always the case for all of these. So, let's do a practice. The first thing we're going to do is write out the equilibrium expression. So, the example gives you the equation, and we notice all of them are gases, so we'll include everything. And I can write my expression. KEQ equals products over reactants. So, NH3 is my product. It has the coefficient of 2, so it gets squared, divided by N2. It doesn't have a coefficient, so it's a 1. We don't usually show that. Times H2, the other reactant, which has a coefficient of 3, so we're going to raise the H2 to the third. The other part of this would be potentially to calculate K. And you'll be provided with information like this, so different molarities, different concentrations. And then you would just plug these numbers in to your KEQ expression. So K will equal 0 0.00018 for the NH3 squared, divided by 0 0.071 for the N2, 
times the 0 0.0092 for the H2 cubed. And you'll plug that in your calculator, and you should get about 0 0.59. K does not have a unit. Okay. At this time, please write the KAQ expression and solve for K for the provided practice problem below. You should pause the video and try this. Please check your answer. Your expression should look just like mine. And then you should have plugged in your numbers and solved and ended up with a K value right around 300. Again, remember, no units for these. Okay, so let's kind of briefly discuss what KEQ actually tells us. When something has a large K, so again, reminder, K is products over reactants. So when something has a large K value, it means that your products are a lot greater, most likely, than your reactants. To reach equilibrium, we want them to be about the same. So we're going to shift towards the reactants. So you're going, the reaction would shift towards the reactants, so it would shift in this direction. If instead you have a small K, your reactants are most likely going to be quite a bit greater than your products. So instead, to reach equilibrium and make them so they're the same, you would go toward the products, so you would shift to the right. And if k equals 1, this is said to be at equilibrium already, and therefore your products should equal your reactants. Okay. Now, a type of question you might see on the test is something like this. Which direction will the reaction most likely go? And then briefly explain. So the first one is a large K. Notice the exponent. So you would say that it would shift towards the reactants, so it's going to shift to the left. And the second one is a small K, so instead you would say that it would go towards the products or shift to the right. Let's talk about these shifts in equilibrium in a little bit more detail. We're going to talk about some changes and stresses that take place or could take place and the direction in which that reaction will go. If you increase the reactants, you would shift towards the products. If you do the opposite, you go towards the reactants. The same is true for increasing and decreasing the products. If you increase the pressure or decrease the pressure, notice this says gases only. You're going to, if you're increasing pressure, you go towards less moles of gas. If you're decreasing pressure, you go towards more moles of gas. If you increase the temperature, you move away from the heat in the reaction. And if you decrease the temperature, you go toward it. I always say, oh, if it's hot outside, I don't want to be near the fire. But if it's cold, I do. That helps me remember that. And then finally, if a catalyst is added, there is no change in equilibrium. You'll get a chance to try this on the next slide. Okay, at this point, please pause the video and try this practice problem. All you're doing is saying which direction it will shift. Please check your answers. Notice that when the pressure increased, you went towards 2 moles of gas. When it decreased, you went the other way. And the same was true for temperature.